Hey Cool Worlders, it's David. I've got a question for you. Have you ever wondered how many planets there might be in the universe? Well, this is going to be part one of a little mini-series I'm doing where I'm going to tackle this question. But before we can take on the entire universe, in today's video we're going to be a bit closer to home and ask the question, how many planets are there just in our home galaxy, the Milky Way? It's actually kind of remarkable that we only know the number of stars in our galaxy, let alone planets for the moment, to within a factor of Two. I mean, you'd expect this to be something that we would know by now. Now, we've catalogued over half a billion stars in our sky, but dust and clouds in between the stars actually obscure our view to the other side of the galaxy. So, presumably, there are many more stars we just can't see. Now, how many planets and stars there are in the Milky Way sort of depends as where you define the Milky Way as ending. So, for the purposes of this video, we're going to use 50,000 light years, which is about where the spiral arms end. By measuring the rotation speed of stars around the galactic center, we can actually weigh how much mass is enclosed within this 50,000 light year boundary. It comes out to about 200 billion times the mass of the sun. But weirdly, when you add up all the luminous stuff that you see in the sky and try and extrapolate it across the galaxy, you get a number more like 80 billion times the mass of the sun. So why is there such a big difference? Now it's not just the Milky Way where this difference crops up, we see it all over the universe, and we think this is due to dark matter. So this is matter which just doesn't emit light. What's amazing is that dark matter is the majority stakeholder when it comes to cosmic mass. Now 80 billion times the mass of the sun does not necessarily equal 80 billion stars because stars have different masses. They don't all have the mass of the sun. So to convert from the total mass of all the stars to the total number of all the stars, we have to know something about the mass distribution of these stars. And when we include this effect, we think that the total number of stars is more like 200 billion stars, just in our Milky Way. Okay, great, so we have a number for the number of stars, but how many planets are there around these stars? Thanks to a planet hunting technique called gravitational microlensing, which is really sensitive to cold, distant exoplanets, we've determined that every star, on average, has one cold planet. Looking at another planet hunting technique called transits, which looks at close in, warm planets around their star, we find, on average, one warm planet per star. Now remember the way this averaging is working out is that there could be some stars out there which have no planets, and there could be some stars which are chocked full of them, but the average comes out to one warm one and one cold one, which gives us two exoplanets per star, on average. So coming back round to the question as to how many planets are there in the Milky Way, it's tempting just to take this average planet number and multiply it by this 200 billion stars that I told you were in the Milky Way. But there are some problems with doing that because, for example, the transit technique has only really looked at stars which are in our galactic neighborhood. We haven't surveyed the entire galaxy. Perhaps there are regions of our galaxy where stars are just devoid of planets. One place where this might actually happen is in the galactic core. Near the galactic center, the typical distance between stars is some 200 times closer than our neck of the woods. So, you know, that means that close encounters of the stellar kind are way more frequent, and thus gravitational disruption can strip these stars of their planets. Such planets would likely be summarily ejected from their host stars, much like a rowdy patron at a Manhattan nightclub left to wander the galaxy as now a rogue planet. So this might actually help explain another result from microlensing that claims that there are twice as many rogue free-floating planets as there are stars in our galaxy. So putting this all together as a low-ball estimate, let's just halve the average number of planets per star because of ejections and things, and let's just completely ignore the claim of free-floating planets in our Milky Way. Even so, that would still give you 200 billion planets in our Milky Way. Now let me just stress that this is even more of a lowball estimate because planets smaller than the Earth are largely undetectable to our current techniques. So there could be like a heap load of those that we're just not counting here. So to get to a highball estimate, let's assume that these sub-Earth-sized planets would double the number of average planets per star. And let's assume that this average number is fairly consistent across the Milky Way galaxy, and let's also fold in those free-floating planets. So that would give us, on average, six planets per star, or 1.2 trillion planets just in our Milky Way galaxy. Now remember that's all types of planets, everything from Mercury's to Jupiter's, 
But what about the Earth analogues? You know, places where we might take a vacation one day. So for this calculation, let's just focus on the M dwarfs. They make up 75% of the stars in the Milky Way. So they are the dominant type of star we need to worry about. There was an awesome recent result led by Courtney Dressing who found that on average, one in six of these M dwarfs have Earth-sized planets at the right distance from their star for liquid water, and thus potentially life. So this would give us 25 billion habitable worlds in our galaxy alone. That's, that's more holiday destinations than there are people on our planet right now. But we really don't know how truly hospitable these planets would be for life. This is research that the future of astronomy is going to try and answer. In part two, we're gonna use these numbers to calculate how many planets there are in the entire universe. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. So if you like this video, make sure you click the like and subscribe button. As usual, it really does help us out. And of course, do ask questions below. I really do read them and like to respond to you guys. And let me know if you have any burning questions that would make a good video as well. So until next time, stay thoughtful and stay curious.